Okay, let's go ahead and talk about fault tolerance. And when it comes to hardware and fault tolerant, the name of the game is redundancy. All right, we want to make sure we have redundant components in case one fails, operations can do what? Operations need to continue. As I mentioned, the show must go on. All right, so that basically refers to disks, networking cards, whether they're NICs or HBAs, okay, the network interface cards, or host bus adapters, power supplies and fans. Again, these things apply to servers, switches or directors, and storage arrays. Okay, all of the main things within our uh, computing infrastructure. So storage processors, uh, the engines within the storage arrays, or the directors, so on and so forth. So as we can see, let's say for instance again, we're getting back to our virtualized world. Okay, this, this applies to physical and also virtual, okay, this idea of redundancy. But in a virtualized environment, it's much easier. Okay, we can move things from one cluster to another with very, very little heavy lifting, if you will. All right, so in this instance, or in this example, we have several ES, uh, ESX clusters, VMware ESX clusters. We have a failing scenario, say the one in the middle has failed. We have fault tolerance between each of the three clusters we can actually move workloads from one to the other. Now, as I mentioned, we can be proactive so that if we know we need to uh, take one down for some planned downtime, we can move that over proactively, or depending upon how we have things set up, we can do an HA environment where we're running to both simultaneously. So if one fails, that cutover or that failover is pretty much seamless. All right, so the level of redundancy, you can kind of keep in the back of your mind, the more redundant, the more cost typically, all right? Because you have to have double, triple, or more of each component.